Hi YouTube, this is Dutch Reefer and today I'm going to discuss a subject with you that most of you should be familiar with and that's how to control nitrates and phosphates in your reef tank. As some of you might know, my reef tank has quite a high values of nitrate and phosphate. Um, on the one hand that's something I'm doing on purpose because I'm having a mixed reef so when you're keeping mainly SPS corals then you want very high or even very low or even ultra low nutrients in your system so then the nitrates and the phosphates should barely be measurable but when you're keeping a mixed reef which also includes uh, soft corals then uh, having a bit of nitrates and phosphates is actually not a bad thing it's even good for your system to have uh, some amount of it. Um, the presence of nitrates and phosphates in my system is something yeah, that I'm, it's a double-edged sword for me. So on the one hand, I'm very happy that I have some in there because um, that's, that's how I keep my reef alive and how it's thriving. But on the other hand, it's sometimes frustrating when you're trying to keep these values in check because any SPS corals will, st well, will, they will react very strongly if you have too much phosphates and nitrates in your tank. And for me, it's always a challenge to maintain the balance because I want to have some. So I want to have my nitrates around 10 and my phosphates around 0 0.1. That would be optimal values for me. But then again, it's very hard to actually keep them in that range. At this time, my uh, phosphates are around 0 0.3 and my nitrates are about 30. So that's too high. Um, that's something... You, you can also notice this when you look at the corals more closely, especially when looking at the, the SPS corals, you will see that they're not very happy in my tank, especially I have one piece of Acropora left in my tank, I don't have that many, but you can see here, the tips are not looking that great, there's no polyp expansion, so you can see that this Acropora is not doing very well, actually it's, it's, yeah, it's I wouldn't say slowly dying, but um, if I'm not getting my nutrients lower, then it will definitely die in the foreseeable future. So that's not a good thing. On the other hand, when you're having high phosphates and high nitrates, then other corals will be doing just fine. As for example, this soft coral right here, this toadstool soft coral, it's doing really well. And also LPS corals like this scenario, which I've shown you before, or these blastomusa behind the cardinal which are also doing really well so as you can see having these high nutrients for my entire tank is not definitely a bad thing because the most things are doing just fine even SPS corals like this Stylophora it's not bothered by the high values it's doing just fine but then again it would be doing even better if the values were a little lower for example, do you see this Montipora? That's really struggling right now. It should be red, but as you can see on the top, it has bleached a bit, and only the, the edges. The edges they're growing a bit, but it's not looking very great. And another example of which which is actually doing just fine is this Pavona cactus coral, and that's actually doing just fine. So even though it's an SPS coral, it is not bothered by the high nutrients in the system. So the next question is, of course, how do I keep my nutrients in check? Well, to do that, I'm using, uh, I was, until, up until now, I'm using, I was using two things to do that. The first one is a skimmer, which is a very obvious one. And the second one is carbon dosing. So I have been experimenting with that. Uh, I have been dosing purely vodka for about a year, which was working fine. Then I tried out um, Red Sea's uh, NO3 PO4X, which was also a good replacement, but I thought it was very expensive, quite expensive, because especially when you're maintaining a system like mine, which is 500 liters, and you want to keep your parameters in check, then you have to dose around 40 milliliters a day. So then a bottle, which costs around 30 euros, that will deplete in less than a month. So it was becoming too expensive for me. So I switched to another, an alternative, the carbon source, which is called DSR Easy Carbon. It's actually a Dutch brand because there's a guy, Glenn Fong, he has uh, developed the DSR, the Dutch Synthetic Reefing Method. So uh, I'm using his 
NO3 PO4 remover. Uh, the ingredients are unknown, so they're not listed on the bottle, just they're like the same with the Red Sea product. But I can assume there's uh, vinegar in there, uh, maybe sugar and maybe another carbon source. The second thing which, uh, actually that's uh, the skimmer and uh, the carbon which I mentioned. And then the third thing uh, which I used in the past and I've started using again yesterday is NP pellets. So as you might know them as bio pellets. I'm using the Colombo brand which is I think also a Dutch brand. They also create some test sets so to test your water parameters but they have these bio pellets. They're very basic ones actually. Um, I've used about half for my tank to set it up. So I'll show you inside the cabinet. As you can see the skimmer is doing its work so that's doing just fine and then here's the vertex filter with bio pellets inside. So this of course still has to adapt to the system so that won't, I added it yesterday so that it won't work within a day, it has to adapt in there for about two three weeks and then I hopefully will see uh, my values slowly decreasing. I'm sure there are other ways as well to maintain your uh, your nutrients level at a stable value, but these are the ones I'm using. Um, like I said, I have been carbon dosing for quite a while. Uh, even in my previous tank, I was already doing that, um, so I'm still doing that. Bio pellets I've used uh, last summer for a bit, and then took it out again. I don't know why, but yeah, I felt like I didn't need it anymore. But now. I definitely thought I needed it again, so that's why uh, I have re-added it to my system. Um, another way of reducing your nitrates and phosphates in your system is doing water changes. I'm not doing that many water changes. I try to do about a 10% water change every month. Uh, since I'm using the ATI Essentials, it's not necessary um, to do water changes, except of course the buildup of nitrates and phosphates, which I'm trying to get rid of in a different way by using the, the, the carbon and the bio pellets. Um, other than that, um, yeah, I, I even though the, the system isn't running on low nutrients, I think it's still looking healthy. Uh, luckily, only the corals will uh, will suffer from uh, from a, a, an abundance of nitrates and phosphates, not the fish. The fish are actually doing just fine. I think that when you're having, when you're having extreme nitrates and phosphate values, then your fish might start to suffer. But luckily for me, that's not the case. Um, even the, the uh, of course, the most hardy fish will definitely survive, but even the more delicate fish, like the, uh, the dragon face pipe fish, they're doing very well. Uh, they're not showing any signs of uh, sickness or whatever, so it's definitely not a bad thing to have high values, but just keep in mind that when you are when you are having high values, then keeping SPS corals, especially the most hard SPS corals like Acropora, that will be a challenge and it will be uh, something you need to avoid until you have your values in check. So that's about it. I'll uh, give you a quick zoom by for the corals, just for fun. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope I have taught you something new, or maybe you already knew, but maybe it's confirmation for you. Um, at least I will be trying to get my nutrients a little lower, just to make sure that even the SPS are having fun in my tank, not just the LPS because and the soft corals, because as you can see, uh, most of the LPS and soft corals are doing just fine. So yeah, that's it for this time. See you again next video. Bye bye.